Be prepared for some groundbreaking news that's set to shake things up in Jerusalem. We're talking about the highly anticipated construction of the Third Temple, and guess what? We've got the inside scoop on exactly where it's going to be built. But that's not all. We've also got the latest blueprint that reveals how this magnificent structure is going to look. So, are you excited to learn more about this historic development? Let's dive into this video today to know all the prophesized details. Did you know that plans for the Third Temple in Jerusalem have already been created? The blueprints have been meticulously designed over many years, drawing inspiration from ancient Jewish texts like the Torah and Talmud. Scholars have carefully studied these texts to ensure that the new temple stays true to the past while incorporating modern features. According to these plans, the third temple will echo elements from Herod's temple, which existed almost 2,000 years ago. However, it will also include modern materials like glass and steel and modern conveniences such as stairways and an elevator. Imagine it as a virtual tour witnessing the grandeur of the third temple as it rises in Jerusalem. Thanks to detailed renderings and 3D animations, we can catch a glimpse of what this future temple might look like. Imagine yourself walking through its main entrance, adorned with golden windows leading to the priest's chamber and a majestic doorway inviting us into the holy sanctuary. Inside, we find a spacious hallway illuminated by golden chains cascading from above, just as described in ancient Jewish texts. A grand staircase leads to the upper levels, while decorative crowns adorn the entrance to the sanctuary. Exploring the temple's interior, as we continue our virtual tour, we encounter numerous chambers designated for the priest's use. Moving towards the heart of the temple, we arrive at the holy sanctuary, the focal point of the entire structure. Here we can envision the sacred rituals and ceremonies that will take place, surrounded by the timeless beauty of the temple's design. As we step into the holy sanctuary of the third temple, we are greeted by walls adorned in shimmering gold, reflecting the sacred light within. High above, small windows reminiscent of those in Solomon's temple allow beams of light to filter through. A double curtain, intricately embroidered with cherubim, separates the Holy of Holies, the most sacred space within the sanctuary. Here we find the revered implements, the menorah, the table of showbread, and the golden altar, each occupying its rightful place of honor. While the temple's construction materials include the timeless stone of old modern elements such as glass, marble, concrete, and wood have been incorporated, seamlessly blending tradition with innovation. Further, our virtual journey through the temple takes us through various chambers and along the Masiba passageway before we ascend the stairs to the roof. We can fully encircle the temple from this vantage point, marveling at its grandeur and majesty. As we climb to the highest point, we are afforded a panoramic view of the temple, allowing us to appreciate its architectural beauty from every angle. Here we notice a unique ladder used for accessing and maintaining the upper levels, a testament to the temple's meticulous design and attention to detail. Through these detailed blueprints and animations, we gain valuable insight into the future of the Third Temple in Jerusalem. Not only do they provide us with a visual representation of its design, but they also signify the advanced preparations being made for its construction. The Sanhedrin's Chamber in the Third Temple The plans for the Third Temple reveal an intriguing truth. It will not stand alone, but will be part of a multifaceted complex. It would be a network of courtyards and chambers, each serving a specific purpose and accessible at varying levels on the Temple Mount. The supreme religious authority within this complex will be the Sanhedrin, a revered assembly. Their assembly hall, currently in the design phase, will be the heart of their operations. Envision a grand chamber reminiscent of the historic Chamber of Hewn Stones, adorned with a central fountain to create a serene atmosphere for the Sanhedrin's deliberations. As the esteemed members gather in a circle at the center of the assembly room, their designated seats will underscore their significance. While the development stages are well underway, plans also include a comprehensive library to support their work. Integrating religious requirements with modern practicalities like electricity, plumbing, and heating systems will be crucial. 
necessitating adjustments to the initial design. Further, the Third Temple's menorah holds profound significance as it stands at the heart of Jewish Jerusalem. Towering majestically in the Jewish quarter, this unique menorah is not merely a replica, but a meticulously crafted instrument built to exact biblical specifications. Its purpose is to illuminate the holy sanctuary once the Third Temple is erected. Nestled within the bustling Jewish quarter, this golden menorah symbolizes the fervent hope for the restoration of the Jewish temple. More than a decorative piece, it embodies the collective aspiration for the temple's return and will find its place of honor inside the third temple upon its completion. Awaiting its rightful place, the third temple in Jerusalem stands as a powerful symbol of Jewish faith and tradition. The Temple Institute in Jerusalem is diligently preparing for its reconstruction. One of the most significant artifacts is the majestic menorah, valued at about two million pounds. Just imagine the moment when the priests ascend the temple steps, ready to kindle the flames within this sacred vessel, illuminating the holy sanctuary after 2,000 years. When the menorah was brought to its location, there was immense celebration. It marked the return of the menorah to Jerusalem after two millennia. The golden head plate, also known as the crown, is a vital element for service in the third temple. Inside the Temple Institute in the Jewish quarter of Jerusalem, visitors can witness various items meticulously prepared for use in the third temple. These are not replicas, but authentic items designed according to biblical commands. The head plate, inscribed with the words, Holy to Hashem, meaning holy to the name, reflects the reverence Jews hold for God's name. This inscription aligns with the directive from Exodus, emphasizing the sanctity of the item. Crafted to exact specifications, the head plate serves as a tangible symbol of readiness for the temple's reconstruction. When the time comes, the high priest will be chosen, and this sacred adornment will be placed on his forehead as he serves in the restored temple of Jerusalem. It's astonishing to think that we can see the head plate that the high priest will use in the third temple, awaiting its rightful place along with the temple itself. Further, step inside the Temple Institute in Jerusalem's Jewish quarter, and you might feel like you're entering a museum. But every item here has a purpose. It's all designed for use in the third temple of Jerusalem. Through careful study of ancient texts, intricate vessels for temple service have been recreated in anticipation of this future event. These aren't mere replicas for display, but crafted to serve in the future temple. Over 60 kosher vessels, ranging from incense burners to silver trumpets, have been faithfully recreated based on historic descriptions. They await the fulfillment of biblical prophecy, serving as a tangible reminder of Israel's future. But it's not just handheld items. Larger temple pieces like the showbread table and the altar of sacrifice have also been reproduced, ready to fulfill their sacred roles. These meticulously crafted vessels stand as a testament to the enduring faith and preparation for the restoration of the temple service. Fragrant incense will fill the air twice daily in the future third temple, offered on this golden altar. Each morning, Twelve fresh loaves of bread symbolizing the twelve tribes of Israel will grace this showbread table. But these aren't just for show. They're destined for use in the third temple. The reformed Levites, designated to serve in the temple, will stand at the gates with these very instruments, welcoming worshipers to the restored Jewish temple in Jerusalem. This golden altar isn't a mere display. It's designed to be portable, allowing it to be moved and used in the third temple. However, the issue of resuming animal sacrifices is complex and sensitive. As a result, the altar has been made smaller and may be placed under a canopy to avoid controversy. When the third temple is built, these sacred items will be out of sight, reserved solely for temple use. But for now, you can catch a glimpse of them at the Temple Institute. These meticulously crafted pieces are ready and waiting to fulfill their sacred rules once the third temple becomes a reality. So if you want to see them, don't wait. Visit the Temple Institute before they're sent off to the temple, never to be seen again. The Levites, Kohanim, and their garments. Now it's time to meet the Levites, also known as the Kohanim, the descendants of Aaron. They're tasked with the sacred duty of temple service and actively gearing up for their roles in the third temple. 
If you wander around Jerusalem at the right time, you might spot Levites dressed in their traditional garments, busy preparing for temple service. Clad in specially remade white cotton garments adorned with intricate sashes, these Levite priests diligently honed their skills through study, practice, and rituals. For them, the Third Temple isn't just a distant dream. It's their future, and they're diligently preparing to serve in it. But the Kohanim aren't sitting idly by, waiting for the Third Temple to magically appear. They're actively getting ready, ensuring that everything is in place to resume Jewish temple service. From practicing rituals like the first fruit offering, the twin loaf offering, to the Passover offering, they're leaving no stone unturned. For the Levites, it's a historic moment. It's the first time in two millennia that such thorough preparations have been made for the resumption of temple service in Jerusalem. Even the attire of the high priest has been delicately remade, patiently awaiting the chosen leader who will guide Israel back to temple service. At the Temple Institute, a singular sacred breastplate is meticulously preserved. It is adorned with 12 stones, each engraved with the name of one of Israel's tribes. This special garment will adorn the high priest when temple service resumes. Indeed, everything is being meticulously prepared, aligning with biblical prophecy. The Levites are ready, they're training, and they're gearing up for their sacred duty. The prophetic clock is ticking faster than ever, signaling ancient prophecies' imminent realization. Never before in over 2,000 years has so much come together in preparation for the resumption of temple service in Jerusalem. It's a momentous time, filled with awe and anticipation as the dream of rebuilding the third temple edges closer to reality. Moreover, can you imagine the challenges faced in sourcing the essential ingredients for the third temple's sacred ceremonies? Special oils like frankincense, myrrh, and the resin of the balm of Gilead are crucial, but they vanished with the Jewish exile over two millennia ago. But here's where the real struggle began. They didn't know where to find these items since their original sources were lost centuries ago. So, a global quest was launched to locate and retrieve these plants, and miraculously they were smuggled back into Israel. However, there was no guarantee they would thrive on Israel's soil again. Yet, against all odds, a miracle unfolded as these ancient botanical treasures sprang back to life, transforming the land of Israel once more. Enter the balm of Gilead Farm, near the Serene Sea of Galilee. This farm is on a mission to resurrect the cultivation of these sacred plants for temple use. Every part of these plants will serve a purpose in temple rituals, from the resin to the leaves and berries. Thanks to this painstaking effort, Israel's long-lost tradition of cultivating sacred plants has been revived. These precious ingredients will be readily available for the Third Temple's ceremonies, ensuring that the Levites can perform their sacred duties authentically. It's truly a modern miracle to witness these plants thriving once again, producing the resin, leaves, berries, and everything necessary for the sacred temple ceremonies. As all the pieces come together, it's evident that a grand tapestry of preparation is unfolding for the imminent construction of the Third Temple. With each plant's growth, drop of resin, and fragrant aroma, the dream of rebuilding the Jewish Temple in Jerusalem draws closer to reality. A testament to the resilience and faith of those who have dedicated themselves to this monumental task. This ritual will surely make waves worldwide. In the ancient Jewish temple, the Day of Atonement, known as Yom Kippur, featured a special ceremony involving two identical goats. According to Leviticus, the priests carefully chose these goats for their roles. Here's how it went down. The high priest cast lots, essentially drawing straws, to determine the fate of each goat. One goat was selected for a sin offering inside the temple, while the other, known as the scapegoat, bore the sins of the nation and was sent into the wilderness. Now, as Israel anticipates the rebuilding of the Jewish temple in Jerusalem, preparations for this future include selecting and preparing animals for sacrifice and remaking the lots used to identify the two goats according to ancient tradition. This ensures that when the time comes, the Yom Kippur rituals can be faithfully observed as prescribed in Scripture. The box used for casting these lots has been meticulously remade, ready to play its crucial role in this important ritual. Location of the Third Temple and a Fulfillment of Prophecy 
The proposed location for constructing the Third Temple is the Temple Mount in the Old City of Jerusalem, a site of immense religious significance for Jews and Muslims. However, the prospect of building the Third Temple is highly contested, particularly due to the presence of two historic Islamic structures, the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock. Many Muslims believe the Dome of the Rock, built by the Umayyad Caliphate, occupies the exact spot where the Second Temple once stood. However, scholars have differing opinions about the temple's precise location. Some argue that it was situated just north or south of the Dome of the Rock, or even between the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque. These Islamic structures pose a significant obstacle to the realization of building the Third Temple. Any attempts to alter or infringe upon these sites could provoke severe international conflicts, given their sacred status in the Muslim world. Furthermore, Orthodox Jewish scholars have reservations about initiating the temple's construction before the Messiah's arrival. They emphasize the need for precise prophetic guidance, as building the temple requires exact knowledge of measurements, such as the cubit. Discrepancies regarding the size of the cubit add to the complexity of this issue. According to Jewish tradition, building the second temple was only possible with direct prophetic guidance. Without such revelation, Orthodox scholars maintain that it would be impossible to rebuild the temple, even if the mosques were no longer present at the site. Thus, while some groups of devout Jews are fervently anticipating the construction of the third temple, significant challenges remain, including political, religious, and logistical obstacles, as well as differing interpretations of sacred texts and historical evidence. Not only this, the sighting of a fox on the Temple Mount has sparked intrigue worldwide, but why? It's all about prophecy, which signifies the Third Temple's location. In the Book of Lamentations, there's a mention of the sign of a fox. Recently, fox sightings on the Temple Mount have rekindled interest because in Jewish tradition, this signifies a significant prophetic event, the rebuilding of the Temple. According to the Talmud, four rabbis once witnessed a fox emerging from the former site of the Holy of Holies on the Temple Mount. While some saw this as a reason to weep, one rabbi interpreted it differently. He viewed it as a fulfillment of a prophecy about the Temple's destruction, which also foretold its eventual restoration. This interpretation has persisted over the centuries. The return of foxes to the Temple Mount in modern times has reignited this ancient belief, symbolizing the impending rebuilding of the Third Temple. This sign is mentioned in the Book of Lamentations, connecting the desolation of the Temple Mount with the promise of its eventual restoration, a prophetic sign that the time for rebuilding draws near. So can the Temple be built without destroying the Dome of the Rock? The prospect of building the Third Jewish Temple in Jerusalem without destroying the Dome of the Rock has sparked both hope and controversy among religious communities. A new interfaith initiative called the God's Holy Mountain Vision Project proposes a vision where religious sites coexist peacefully on the Temple Mount, accommodating both Jewish and Islamic traditions. According to Islamic tradition, the Dome of the Rock commemorates the spot where Muhammad ascended to heaven, while Jewish tradition holds that the Temple's Holy of Holies was located on Mount Moriah, now under the dome. Traditionally, it was assumed that the destruction of the Dome of the Rock would be necessary for the construction of the Third Temple. However, a different perspective has emerged. Yoav Frankel, director of the God's Holy Mountain Vision Project, argues that Jewish doctrine regarding the rebuilding of the Temple emphasizes the role of a prophet. This prophet would have the authority to specify the Temple's location, irrespective of existing Jewish traditions. Frankel suggests that a revelation from such a prophet could designate the current or an extended Temple Mount as the site for the Third Temple, in peaceful proximity to the Dome and other religious sites. Despite the initiative's intentions to promote peace and shared worship, it has faced opposition from both Muslim and Jewish communities. Sheikh Abdullah Nimar Darwish, the founder of the Islamic movement in Israel, emphasized that decisions regarding the temple should be left to the Mahdi, the Muslim equivalent of the Messiah. He warned against any attempt to rebuild the temple before the Mahdi's arrival, asserting that such actions would lead to bloodshed. On the Jewish side, Baruch ben Yosef, chairman of the movement to restore the temple, insisted that the temple must be built where the Dome of the Rock stands. 
He rejected the notion that a prophet could alter the location specified in Jewish law and emphasized the importance of adhering to tradition. The controversy extends within Jewish communities as well. Mainstream Orthodox rabbis have opposed rebuilding the temple since Israel gained control of the mount in 1967, citing ritual purity concerns. However, grassroots organizations like the Movement to Restore the Temple and Maverick Rabbis, such as Rabbi Israel Ariel, advocate for renewing sacrifices on the Temple Mount and rebuilding the temple. And so what do you think of the location of the Third Temple in Jerusalem? Comment below your views and subscribe for more.